Okay, so this afternoon we're going to look at a little case about a root canal which needed surgical management. So for those of you who don't know what a root canal is, it is usually a procedure performed by a dentist when the tooth is dead, dying, or extremely painful. And the reason why it is often painful is because bacteria have gained access to the center of the tooth which contains our nerve and blood vessels. When this occurs, it usually results in inflammation around that nerve which is quite a bit of pain. So when you feel that toothache which makes you want to get out of bed and rip your tooth out, those are usually the cases requiring a root canal. However, more often than not, it is cases where the tooth is already dead or the pain has completely stopped and this is because the tooth is now dead, which means the nerve is no longer in function and there is no longer a blood supply to this tooth. The effect is that bacteria gaining access into this uh, dead space within your tooth is that bacteria are able to spread, toxins are able to be released and these toxins have no place to go other than into the bone at the base of the root where the root canal and blood vessel enter into the tooth. Over time this results in the formation of an abscess which in some cases your body may be able to handle quite well, localize and in other cases results in an enlarged swelling or an abscess which is the second cause of pain from an infected tooth. Very often, especially what we see nowadays, is that uh, there are abscesses or lesions which are at the base of the root within the bone which uh, the dentist is unable to adequately visualize with two-dimensional x-rays. So at Matrix Dental Specialists we use 3D x-rays which allows us to see all angles around your tooth. We are able to accurately measure the dimensions of the lesion and the nature of the lesion and determine how what, or what is the possibility for us to actually restore that tooth uh, non-surgically. So in this particular case the patient had a swelling on their palate and this persisted for quite some time and she had actually visited a dentist uh, in order to determine the cause. However, because of their two-dimensional x-rays, they were unable to see a large lesion present on the palate side of the tooth. So very often if the lesion is very large and the dentist tries to negotiate the root canal, they will find that there's continuous drainage of pus, there's still persistent swelling and pain, and this is often because the lesion is quite large and extensive, in this case being extending through the bone into the tissue of the palate. In this case, we selected to go the route of a surgical option. And the surgical option involved the dentist completing his root canal, which, was obviously, which means that he opened up into the center of the tooth, removed all the contents of the nerve chamber. They completely sterilized, decontaminated the tooth so that the patient can obviously maintain it over time and then the dentist sealed it and at the same day we actually opened up a surgical flap and exposed the large lesion. In some cases these lesions may be an abscess or something called an inflammatory granuloma and in certain cases it can also be a cystic type of lesion. Irrespective of the nature of the lesion it is often not possible for your dentist to determine the exact type of lesion from a radiograph. So these lesions often need to be biopsied during the surgery where we remove the actual tissue or take samples of the pus or whatever else is inside of there and we actually send it to a pathology lab for further investigation. So in this particular case the lesion is quite extensive and it punched a hole right through towards the palate of the patient and there was a significant amount of infected tissue and a what we call inflammatory granulation tissue. Once the area was clean, disinfected, uh, obviously it's not good practice to leave the patient with a large hole within their bone. So in this particular case we made use of biomaterials. So there are a variety of biomaterials and these are bone replacement grafts. In this particular case it is derived from cow bone. So this is called a xenograft and the purpose of it is to form a scaffold for your own bone to attach onto, integrate and then grow your own bone with. One of the more 
important factors is that these are dimensionally stable so it doesn't take it takes a while before your body is able to completely eradicate this material and this preserves the volume of the bone and the tissue that we require in this particular case we also place a second type of material called a membrane and this is produced from a variety of sources being bovine tendon or the pericardium which is the membrane around the heart usually from porcine or pork and the reason we require these membranes is obviously to separate the outer tissue layer from the bone layer and this allows your your bone cells to actually focus and home in to this region and start to attach and to the biomaterials and start to grow bone without invasion of the soft tissues um, in terms of the success of these apical uh, surgeries, uh, if done correctly with microsurgical techniques in a clean environment with the right materials, we usually have fantastic results as long as the tooth is completely sealed and restored.